everyone, I'm Jillian Schultz, a registered dietitian and nutritionist with Sound Dietitians. You may know me from cooking demos or behind the scenes of all of the social media. But what, today I'm starting with making a homemade yogurt recipe. I used to go through a whole thing of the Siggy's yogurt uh, every week and it's like $6 per thing of yogurt. And I started making it myself because I noticed on the Instant Pot there was a yogurt button. So I was really curious and I looked it up one day um, from different bloggers and how they did it and what to keep in mind while you're making it. And I've managed to cut my yogurt budget by a third. So if your family goes through a lot of yogurt or you just want to be creative and try something different, this is definitely a recipe that I think you'll like. So uh, a couple of things that you'll need first off You'll need your Instant Pot, which has, I'll explain some of the features. There's a ceiling ring on the inside. There's a valve on the top that has venting or sealing. So when it's in the sealing position, that's usually for pressure cooking recipes. When it's in the venting position, you can use it as a slow cooker or as a crock pot. Um, and then you can also use it as a skillet because it'll, it'll um, saute on the bottom like a hot plate. So there's a lot of different features that you can use. And then it comes with a, like a drip bucket on the back. So when you open the lid, um, all the condensation will drip into the back compartment and it won't get all over your counter. And then there's also different settings. There's um, settings if you're making beans and chilies, settings if you're doing meats and stews, rice, porridge, anything like that. And this is the older model. There are newer models that have more settings and um, have like a touch screen. It gets really high tech, um, but this is the basic one and it works for me. And so I, I honestly don't think you need any of the other bells and whistles. So um, yeah, and then it also comes with some tools, it has like a mini ladle and a rice um, scooper. And then um, in order to do the yogurt, you're going to need just a couple extra things. You'll need um, a rubber spatula, a thermometer. This is really important because um, you're going to have to keep track of the temperature of the milk during certain stages. And then uh, you're going to need your favorite yogurt. I found, I've done this with a couple different yogurts and uh, it really, your whole yogurt that you're making turns into pretty much exactly the yogurt starter that you used. Um, you could also, they make yogurt starters specifically for yogurt that you could use, but just buying a cup of yogurt is so much easier. So I just use this generic plain Trader Joe's whole milk yogurt, and you want to make sure it's not sweetened at all. Any sweetener or um, or fruit or anything in there will ruin the yogurt um, and you also want to make sure that it has live and active cultures added after pasteurization because pasteurization is when uh, everything is heated up in the yogurt to kill off bacteria and um, if, if the bacteria live active cultures are added before the pasteurization then the, all the heat would kill them anyway so you really want to make sure that they're added after so that you get all those beneficial properties and that's what's going to thicken your yogurt and make everything delicious. Um, you're also going to need your favorite milk. I'm using a whole milk, but you can use any kind of milk you'd like. Um, usually milks with a little bit of fat in it will create a creamier product. So um, just any kind of milk. This is a half gallon. Um, but I think the minimum that you should use is a quart um, and it just depends on your ratio with when you add the yogurt. So and then you'll also need, um, if you, as an option, you can use a bowl that is filled with ice, um, which we'll get to a little bit later. Um, it's kind of just a, if you're impatient, hack that I'll teach you in a minute. So uh, to start off, we're just going to open the Instant Pot. It sings you a little song. And we're gonna add all of the milk, just straight in. I will say that you're going to wanna sanitize your pot. And how you can do that is you can just boil some water and pour it into your pot and, um, and then dump the water out and do that a couple times. Because if you're doing anything 
like making chili or making broth, the pot starts to smell and that can leach into your yogurt. So you don't want yogurt that tastes like chicken broth. Um, so I definitely recommend sanitizing it. Uh, and another way you can do it is filling it with water and just putting it on the stove like a normal pot. You have this inner layer that just comes out and can sit right on the stove. So, um, and then just boil that off for 10 minutes and that should do the trick. So you dumped all your milk in, you add your lid. Um, it doesn't matter venting or sealing. I usually just do sealing um, just to keep all the hot air in there. Um, and then you wanna hit your yogurt and you want it to go to boil and then it'll flash. You don't have to hit start or anything. You just get to the setting you need and it'll take a minute um, to kind of process and then it'll start beeping telling you that it's starting. So what this will do is it'll bring the milk up to um, a higher temperature. You want to take the thermometer and double check when you're done. When it goes off, you want it to be 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, yeah, that's the first step. And I'll come back when it says it's boiling. Okay. So the Instant Pot just told me that it was boiled with a series of beeps and the front screen reads yogurt. And now we're gonna take the temperature. You wanna make sure that it's at at least 180 degrees. And this is, okay. So the hack with this bowl of ice, uh, like I was telling you earlier, you can either uh, just let this sit on the counter for about 30 minutes, or you can remove the inner layer and put it into a bowl of ice to kind of cool it quicker, but you want to cool it down to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, the bowl of ice usually cuts the time in about half. And now we wait. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes. The milk is now 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And so the next step would be to skim off the layer on top. So it creates that kind of rubbery layer. And I'm just going to transfer it into a smaller bowl. Get it out of there. If you were to leave this in, it would just create a less um, smooth finish for your yogurt. So now I'm going to stir in about two and a half to three tablespoons of my yogurt starter. Okay, and then I'm gonna whisk it in so it's fully incorporated. So now that it's fully whisked through and the yogurt has uh, uh, fully incorporated, I'm just going to wipe the bottom off and place it back into the Instant Pot. Now, once it's back in the Instant Pot, we're going to seal the lid. And then we're gonna go back to our yogurt setting and we're gonna hit it until it says eight hours. And then we're gonna leave it, it's gonna beep and start working. And then we're gonna leave it for eight hours and we'll come back after that time. Okay, now it's eight hours later. Let's check on our yogurt. So as you can see, this is the yogurt. There's a little bit of water on top, but that'll stir right in. We're just gonna give it a good stir. So now you just transfer your yogurt into an airtight container and it'll last in your fridge for the next 10 to 14 days. And when you get to the bottom of the yogurt, you want to make sure not to scrape the bottom too hard because there are some milk solids that will stick to the bottom. So as you can see, it's made 
quite a bit of yogurt to get me through the next week or so. So yeah, that's homemade yogurt. <laughs>